What is going on, my friends? Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. My name is Dave Sharp. I'll be your pilot on this flight today, my friends. And as you can see, we have a mom of five, a nurse. I love nurses. God, I love nurses. I really do. Um, the best of what America has to offer, that's for sure. And I know firsthand because as many of you know, my father has had a heart surgery, had some complications, was in the ICU for 30 days. And I saw the best of what America has to offer firsthand. And so I'd like to welcome a former nurse to the show. Lindsay, welcome to the show. Hey, Dave. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fantastic. So what led you to Legendary? What were you, uh, what were you looking for? So I had my, what I thought was going to be my last son back in September. Um, and healthcare just, it doesn't work with so many kids. So on maternity leave, I was looking, I saw actually a friend of mine who is a former nurse and she kind of, I watched her for a few months. I'm like, this ain't real. No freaking way. And then I'm like, you know what? Let's just try it. Why not? And it's been a blessing ever since. Wow. Wow. So <laughs> you saw a nurse that you knew or you just knew she was a nurse? I knew her. We personally worked together at like my first nursing job. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. So when did you first um, like come into contact with her and then decide to like take the challenge and actually like put some skin in the game and say, OK, I'm, I'm going to do this. <laughs> so I so I started talking to her in November of last year. I'm like, all right, let me just watch a little bit. I did my research. I'm like, this ain't real. I'm like, oh, crap, it is real. OK. So in December, I decided, all right, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to take the plunge, took the challenge and started posting getting everything set up. And then January is when it really took off. I was like, all right, we're going to do this all in nothing. We're just doing it. <laughs> yeah. January was a good month. I mean, yeah. it's been a great year. It's really unbelievable. We've continued to break records as a company month yeah. after month in 2023, seven year records. I mean, just the wow. highest days, highest months in, in seven years. And that is, you know, even during a recession, I think right now, I'm not really mm -hmm. sure. I know, I know gases, you know, eggs, milk, yes. bread and everything like that, but yeah. I mean, you know, mortgage rates, interest rates, you know, the economy slowing down, but this business, this industry selling information is not, had you even ever heard of this before being an affiliate or yeah. selling any courses, coaching or events? No, I have not. <laughs> Wow. Interesting. And had you ever done any sort of like work from home or home business or anything outside of the nursing um, career? Nope. I've always been a nurse, you know, working. All right. <laughs> so now that we've got it established that you are truly new, um, my Lord, what's it been like to, to go from being in, in the hospital and doing something where you had to be there every day and if you didn't show up, you didn't get paid unless you took PTO and et cetera, et cetera, 12 hour days. I really do have firsthand experience lately of seeing what that's like and how hard you work mm -hmm. and what you go through. But sheesh, what's <laughs> it been like to go from that to this? It's been a completely different ball game. I'm so used to getting up, throwing on scrubs, going to work, you know, having to take care of how many other people in a day to being able to just be home with my kids, watch them grow. And it's, it's been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so when you, um, when you first started going through the challenge, what was one of the aha moments that you remember that was really like, Ooh, like I want to do this or like, I understand this or, okay, now I'm excited about this. You know, it was, <laughs> A lot of it, like going through the challenge, I was like, okay, I'm like this, you know, I think it, I want to say it was my first call with my business advisor. He was amazing. And I was like, hearing from him and just having a conversation with him, I'm like, all right, you're a normal guy. Like yeah. if shit, if you can do this, I can do this. Like yeah. it was, that was like, okay, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's helpful to talk to somebody. It's why we try to talk to all of our, all of our clients that come through, have a business plan advisor, meet with them. And, you know, most of our business plan advisors have used this knowledge and skills in various different ways. Um, and it's nice to talk to them for sure. Um, what are some of the benefits that you tell others about, um, 
I mean, if you were to describe this kind of lifestyle or business model to somebody else who didn't understand it, how would you brag on it? What would you say that's, that you love about it? I love that even if, you know, crazy days happen with kids, like I still have that income coming in. And I can sit home, I can hang with my kids all day, you know, put in some work in the morning while they're napping or whatever. And it just continuously works. I'm like, I don't have to miss out on my kids. Like I can go and I can go on like this weekend, we're going on vacation. Like I don't have to worry about anything because I have my stuff in the background working. It's like taking a baseball team on vacation, isn't it? (laughs) It is, it is. But it would be worth it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you. Um, anything else? Any? So basically, just and you got to work to get that income going. Yeah. I think. I think what I'm also hearing is you enjoy the idea of the leverage, yes. like the systemization. If you're putting a video up online now, yes. At first, and I'd like to hear your experience, but at first that can be scary. And it's like, oh, geez, putting videos online and oh my God. But then you begin to realize, well, shit, I mean, I'm, I'm out in society anyways. The you know, government knows who I am. And right now to make money, I got to I gotta talk to somebody. And I got to go out in the real world and I got to I gotta have a conversation on the clock. And here, while well, I've recorded a video one time, right, on my phone, and I can post that and gee whiz, that, that video is out there having conversations with people 24 seven, even when I'm on vacation with my kids. Exactly. Exactly. The I'm power right. of video. I don't think that's really sunk in the power, the leverage that you get with posting a video online or even using video. It was a huge marketing breakthrough for me to realize the power of a tool. Mm-hmm. The power of just a tool. And by a tool, I meant something that does the selling and telling for me. Now, back in the day, a tool might have been an audio cassette tape. A tool might have been a PDF or something that you handed somebody that they read. A tool might have been a flip chart that you did a presentation for somebody, but it helped you guide your presentation, right? Right. Now it's 2023. We don't have to, hey, you know, we're not selling encyclopedias door to door anymore. You know what I mean? Right, right. So nowadays, the tool is no longer an audio cassette tape or a CD or something that you're handing out or a pamphlet or whatever. It's a dadgum video that gets posted on Instagram that sometimes gets tens of thousands of views. And what you would have normally traditionally had to do to have that many conversations, one video could have been a lifetime. It would have took you years to say that same thing to that many people. Yep. It, it would. You're right. You see what I'm saying? And so most of us, instead, we look at like, oh, I, I only got 200 views. <laughs> that's my, Go out and have 200 conversations then. And tell me that that's fun. 200 views. We Should we not be celebrating that and really looking at it from more of the glass half full perspective? And how do you stay positive when you feel like you're not making the progress that you think you should be? You know, I'm like, I was like that too. When I first started, I'm like, oh, I only got like 200 views, but like I see everybody else. I'm like, but you know what? It's work. It's going to take time. You know, I had one video that went viral on TikTok and it was posted like three weeks prior. And all of a sudden it was like, boom. And it has, I don't know, like almost 300,000 views on it. And I'm like trying to keep up with all that. I'm like, what in the hell just went on? I'm like, I posted this three weeks ago. And it was like, boom. And it's like, you know, you just have to be like, you know, it takes time. The right people are going to see your stuff. Just keep putting it out there and they're going to see it. And with that one viral video, I I think overnight I gained like 2,000 followers on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay. That's cool. I've never been able to have that many. Think about that. 300,000 follow. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, or 300,000 views. Do you know how much you would have traditionally had to pay your local TV or radio station to run your ad to get, you know, 300,000 views? You don't even have 300,000 people in your town, for God's sakes. Exactly. And I don't even have 300,000 people that want to talk to you in your town, let alone watch, you know, (laughs) so we get. I'm just like, holy crap. And, and, and I wonder if you are too, because I used to go to construction jobs with my dad. We'd show up, we'd work for one person at a time and we'd do the job until it was done. 
Right. And same thing with a nurse. You're going to go, you're going to put in your 12 hour shift and you know, if you want more, you're going to have to. So it's, it's quite a shift in sometimes we get complacent too quick and start complaining about things that are really positives. And, and so, you know, I bring these up because it's very normal to think that it's very mm -hmm. normal. We get complacent very quick and easy human yeah. beings do. And we start complaining like you can go from living in a cardboard box to living in a mansion. And within a few months, you will find something to complain about in mm -hmm. that house. Absolutely. The house is too big. <laughs> True, true. It's very true. I know human beings. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I need a big house. All these kids, they don't touch each other. They got enough room between each other. So <laughs> honestly, you know what I'm talking about. I do. It's about mindset. We talk mm -hmm. about this like a lot. And so um, so what's your why? And and what is really driving you? Is it is it do you believe that you need a why that makes you cry? <laughs> or is that just a corny phrase that people say and you just, it's not, it's not that it doesn't have to be that deep. I mean, I feel if it is that deep, it definitely gives you that extra little push, you know, because like my kids are only getting older and they're getting into things and, you know, it would break my heart to be like, I can't go cause I have to work. And just to see, you know, cause they want their parents there. They want both of them. They want to be like, Hey mom, watch me. And it's like, that hurts to be like, oh, I can't go because I have to work or, oh, sorry, we can't because I have to work and or they deny my PTO. Like, that's my why. And because, you know, after maternity leave, I didn't go back. My son had lots of stuff going on in his first three months. He had surgery. He had COVID. So, yeah, he had surgery at like oh, a baby. Yeah, he had surgery at like oh. a month old, had COVID at like three oh. months old. So sorry he to hear that. Little thing. But you know what? His name's Riker, and that means warrior, and that little man is a warrior. So hey, it worked. So it's like my whole thing is I don't want to miss out on my kids. Yeah. I just don't. They'd only get they're only little once, and I want to be there for everything. And everything mm -hmm. they want to do, I want to be their biggest supporter. Mm-hmm. What do you feel that doing something like this teaches your children? It teaches. I know like my 11 year old stepdaughter is like, I want to do it. She's like, that looks fun. I'm like, well, you got a little while to do it. But I'm like, it teaches them that no matter what you put your mind to, you can do it. If you have that right mindset, you can go ahead and do it. Because I, I know at one point I was like, this is I'm not getting what I want. Like, this is not. But my I looked at my kids and my husband's like, why would you quit now? Like, don't quit. Just keep pushing. And then it was like, I think maybe like three days later, my video went viral and it was like, boom, 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 all the traffic. I was like, well, shit, I'm glad I didn't quit. That's the <laughs> When I say don't quit before the miracle happens, the miracle could be one opt in to your email list that makes you go mm -hmm. run around the house in your underwear <laughs> and finally say, oh, my God, you know, it's real. Right. Or, or it might be, yeah, a video that goes viral. Honestly, the miracle, you might need a, your, your mindset might be so bad that you need a damn miracle every day, <sighs> you know? And I'm serious. Like there's people who just are so negative and it's not, I'm not saying it's particularly your fault if you are super negative and are only like, just, just no matter what happens, you just can't see the silver lining. Like you, there's just people who cannot find a glass can be sitting in front of them half full and they will say, or <laughs> totally full. And they will say, yeah, it looks empty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Um, I, or they're, they're skeptical that it's empty, mm -hmm. right? You say so skeptical, you're, you're afraid and you never experience anything that life has to offer. But that miracle, if, you're if your attitude and your mindset is so negative, you might need a miracle every day. Now, right. what is a miracle? What I mean by a miracle is it's a damn something that keeps your ass doing it. It's <laughs> a little inspiration. I'm not talking, you know, I'm not, I'm not some guru here who's about to start speaking in tongues. It's a damn result. Right. That's the miracle. It's the result that happens that you go, huh. Oh, well, mm -hmm. I'll be damned. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. I'll throw my head on that one. You know, <laughs> I, I finally got an email off in lead. Somebody gave <laughs> me their damn email. You know? True. Yeah. That's that's exactly. Those little victories are what keep you going. Yeah. And they, 
they mean something and matter for us to pay attention to those videos with 10 views. One of the greatest things that Gary Vaynerchuk ever talked about was, and I'm not, it's hard to follow Gary V because he like just puts out so much stuff and it's just, it's just, he's, he, but he's been consistent with one thing and that is appreciate every viewer, appreciate mm -hmm. every follower. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, even the videos that have 20 views, you think that there's many of you who are religious and spiritual. So, and I may be too, but this isn't about me. It's about you. Why in the world would God give you more if you aren't grateful for what you've already got? Sure. Or if, if, if what you have, those 10 viewers, you aren't going to serve them. Right. I'll tell you what people get in, 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 in life. They don't get more power if they're not appreciative of the power that they have. They don't get more power if they abuse power. At least that's not how the universe, they may take it. Right. They may, they may violently take that power, sort of like how we see in other countries, war, tor you know, like what's happening in other parts of the world right now. But the, the universe or God gives you more of something if you, you care about what you already have. Mm-hmm. And so those 10 followers, this is not a sermon. I'm not tr really trying to take everybody to church, but we, I'm telling you those, that small list that you have, that small following that you have, if you can't nurture that and grow that and serve those few people, what in the world makes you think that you deserve or are entitled to more followers right. or more views? And that's not me saying that to you that's me posing a question for everybody to ask to themselves what comes up for you on the topic of personal responsibility and really the difference between being an employee and and now being the business owner the entrepreneur you know it's i don't have to answer to anybody you know and it's being a nurse you know healthcare is not what it was 10 years ago when i started as a nurse you know and it's like, it's nice to know, like, I have control over my day, not somebody else telling me, do this, this, this. Oh, my gosh, you didn't do this. But they're not going to talk about what happened else throughout the day. Like, it's it's good to know I can work when I want, when I, where I want. I'll probably be working in the car today when we drive on vacation. Yeah, I it's used to do that. No I did that. To me. Like, yeah. I don't answer to anybody. I answer, well, my kids, of course, because, you know, but. Hey, those are my little bosses. I got enough of those. <laughs> I don't need another one. And it's good to know I can do. I mean, if I want to pack up and go, I can go. I don't have to worry about saying, sorry, we can't. We don't have staff. Well, not my problem anymore. Your problem. <laughs> and, and it's so nice to be able to work on the go. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's not a bad thing, friends, if you're on your phone around your kids and you're actually working. And we need to have less guilt about that. Now, if we're on our phones and we're just scrolling social media and our kids are right there and they need their diaper changed or you haven't, we haven't played with them or they need to eat or they're clearly looking for attention and we're just scrolling social media. Well, you know, that might be a reason to have a little bit of healthy guilt. I mean, not, right, me, right. Up, but you know, Hey, come on. You know, the, the, the kid needs his diaper changed or whatever. I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying <laughs> if, you're, if you're, if you're, and I'm speaking to myself too, right? I'm a human being. I need to, I have to kick myself in the ass sometimes. I'm not perfect, but I tell you what, there's a big difference in daddy aimlessly scrolling, consuming, escaping reality and, and daddy doing something intentional. Hold on, son. I got to finish sending this message. Very right. big difference in that. Absolutely. And we don't have to feel guilty about that when we're working because, friends, we like to carry guilt and shame around with us. Mm -hmm. We put it in our bag. We take it on. And when we're doing this, we have to understand that we are going to have to claim our time. We are going to have to set those boundaries. So in a home... With children, family, everybody's around, how do you, and you're going to work in the car and I'm sure you're a great compassionate mom, but when you need to set a boundary, what does that look like for you? Usually when I do work, it's when my littlest one's asleep I'll, and I'll tell like my stepdaughter right now is doing school online. Um, so she's done her school. I don't have to worry about her. My five-year-old, I'm like, all right, mommy needs to work. Go grab the iPad, go watch some Netflix, whatever. And he's like, oh, okay. 
so he's like, he's kind of learned, like, when I tell you got to work, go that way. And he's like, oh, okay, no problem. So you just have that balance. I'm like, when I'm done, we'll play, we'll go outside, we'll do whatever. He's like, oh. okay. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. And I've, I've, I've evolved that over time, you know, where I'm, where I'm, where I'm, how I respond to my kids, how that I, that like, like one thing that I've started to do that gives them a little bit more security, especially my, my seven-year-old daughter who is, is very intelligent and will hold me to what I say. And so if I, if I, um, if I say, well, daddy will be done here in a little bit, how long? <laughs> That's my five-year-old. He does the same thing. How long? <laughs> how long? Dude? Yeah. Well, I, I, I got I So now I give her times. I use timers with her. I show her how to, I've showed her how to, how to read time. And, you know, now she wears a little watch. She likes to wear a watch and, and, or I'll set a timer. We used to just set timers on phones. Yeah. And so I'd set it in a, in an area where we could all hear it or something like that. And I'd say in 20 minutes, daddy will be done. And, and then, you know, not only do I know I have a, a, a deadline, so I'm going to be, I'm going to get on it. Try that friends. Even if you don't have kids say, I'm going to get this done in 20 minutes. No BS. I'm going to get this done in 20 minutes and maybe even set something else up where you got to be done. Deadlines are amazing. Deadlines for yourself, but also back to the kids conversation and no, nobody better to speak about it than you. You have, you say four or five. I'm five. I'm pregnant with my sixth. Okay. So nobody can speak about this more better than you can. When you tell the child, you got to train the child, right? Mm -hmm. You got to train your family. You got to train people how to treat you. We all train people how to treat us. And so other things that we may do is we may find a place in our home that is, is, a, is a quiet spot. My recommendation is don't dominate your home. Like if you're starting a new business and you're doing something good, don't make everybody change for you. You change for them. You know, like, like mm -hmm. for me, I didn't understand that at first. Like, <laughs> you know, I would have done it differently, but it's, it's, it's called taking up less space in your home. We're bringing in a big change into our home. We really are. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to support our family. We need to be the responsible ones. We need to be the mature ones. We need to train and learn how to be the CEO. Yep. We can throw our, so that means we're in charge of the atmosphere and the environment, not them. Right. So we need to do everything that we can to help them continue to have a safe, similar routine and we adjust. So many guys come into entrepreneurship and this is such a common thing. Well, my wife doesn't, doesn't support me. And then it's another way that we feel rejection. W what if you asked your wife, I'm starting something new. I want to chase a dream. How can I love you and make you feel supported throughout this process? Because I'm bringing something new into the home. Right. Yeah, it's that was the biggest thing. Like I told my husband, I, I told him about it and he's like, well, if you want to, he's been my biggest supporter from the beginning. Good like, for you and good for him. Do it, do it, do it. Of course it was me that was like, mm, maybe not. Mm, I don't know if I could do this. Like, I don't like to be on camera. Like I've never posted a TikTok in my life until yeah. now. Yeah. He's like, he looked at me, he's like, do it. I'm like, he actually took my phone and paid for the 15 day challenge. <laughs> How was it for you then to get comfortable on camera? What did you, was that a, a kind of a, the first one you, you kind of got it out of your system or t talk to us about like getting comfortable from going, working in person, face to face all the time to now digitally, virtually and on screens. It was, it was, that was probably my biggest challenge was getting comfortable, but I'm like, you know what? I am human. I have probably a baby spit up everywhere whatever. If you don't like it, don't look at it. But you know what? I can relate to people. Yeah. I have kids. I was a nurse. I know there's a lot of nurses that I've worked with that are like, Hey, what are you doing? Let's do it. And it's just, you just do it. Just post it. And you know what? It gets better with time. You may make yourself like an ass the first time. I'm sure I did, but hey, <laughs> it's fun to go back and be like, damn, I came from this to now. Like, okay, it gets better. You just have believe to be her, it. believe it or not. If you can embrace looking like an ass, you'll be a lot more successful. <laughs> We're always so worried about not looking like an ass. But mm -hmm. honestly, my income soared when I stopped caring if I look like an ass or not. Honestly, as a mm -hmm. marketer, 
because prim, proper, perfect is boring mm -hmm. to people. It's just boring. Think about people that you like, that you think are cool, that you, your favorite musicians or rock stars or rappers or actors or, or, or artists or, or, or fellow coworkers. Who's cool? Who do you know that you feel comfortable around? It's not the most perfect person. It's the, the weirdos. It's the people who, it's the peer, people who also show their vulnerabilities and make mm -hmm. it safe for you to be human and, and, and imperfect. Exactly. And so the more that the, the less I worried about if my hair was combed or my hat was perfect or my shirt was different every day. And the, 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 the I just, people just seemed more, they were like, this guy, you know, he's not here to impress. Mm -hmm. My whole thought is either, you know what, this is me, take it or leave it. You don't like it, then just keep on scrolling past. But the right person is going to be like, damn, that's me. And here, she just like me. No, they'll, they'll gravitate. People will gravitate towards you. They will. And we're in a day and age where it's magnetic. People are trained to follow people that they kind of are intrigued by or they just feel comfortable with. It's not mm -hmm. even like they, you, they people don't follow people who they look up to. People follow people who they feel comfortable around. OK, yep. so it's not about going out and trying to impress people and be this great authority and be this, oh, I, how will let people ever think of me or listen to me? I'm not, you know, smart enough or successful enough. People don't follow you because particularly you're successful. Most success, people look at that and they get jealous, maybe a little envious. If you honestly, we're in that day and age where mm -hmm. if you flaunt everything you got, people get turned off by it because a lot of people are struggling. Yeah. So, People are not following people for similar reasons that they followed them in the past. In the past, you could put a commercial up, bullshit everybody with a bunch of fake rented, you know, cars and a mansion and all this. And people would be like, oh, my God, he's so rich. Let me right his ways. Right. And now mm -hmm. if you do that, you basically get canceled. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. Well, Very seriously, true. Seriously, Ellen was in her home during COVID, being like, "Oh, it's it's hard out here in like a you know fifty thousand square foot mansion," and she got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so people they don't even want to see what you got; they just want to feel comfortable around you. Yeah, that's all that matters. Absolutely, they just want to feel comfortable around you. They want to feel like they're safe and that they can be themselves. And if they listen to you and you don't do it right or whatever, that it's okay. You're not going to judge them. You're not going to talk down to them. You mm -hmm. know? Like I've had videos where I've realized after I posted, I'm like, shit, I screwed up. But I just laughed about it. And it was like, okay. And people would be like, oh my God, you messed up. I'm like, yep, I know mom brain. And it was yeah. just the conversation blossomed. And they're That's like, oh, so what do you do? And I'm like, here we go. Let's do the, it. The day you stop starting over when you think you bump fumbled or whatever, mm -hmm. the day that you stop doing that is the day you will set yourself free to actually qualify to make millions of dollars in this doing this business model or or these core four. But you'll never be able to do it if you're picking yourself apart and you're starting every video over and you're so anxious about fumbling one word. Nobody gives two flying Fs. Nope. They don't. And actually, if you fumble and bumble and you talk like a normal person, they'll trust you more. Yep. I think that's a great challenge for everybody who's listening is when you record your videos from now on, we're going to call you one take Drake, baby. That means <laughs> you step up to the microphone, you spit your verse, and you're done. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where we got to get everybody to. That's where I've gotten myself to. We got to get you to Jay-Z status where he doesn't even write down his rhymes. He just steps to the microphone and just can do it. It's unconscious competence. He right. does it without thinking. Same thing that you can, all of us can do if we, if we just embrace as we're filming. Hey, what's going on? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to my video. Um... Gosh, I'm so excited to see you guys. See, I'm you just learn how to just turn those things into just another word yep. instead of stopping, right? And and you just keep talking. And when you do that, now you're quickly putting out more content mm -hmm. and you're doing it easier, you're doing it eff more effortless, and you're doing it more unconsciously instead yep. of like thinking as somebody posted in the comments a moment ago, 
as Tony Robbins said, you're in your head, you're dead. So how do you stay outside of your head and not get in over analyzing yourself? You know, it's that was that was one of the biggest things when I started, because, you know, you see like the big timers like Camila, Becca, and you're like, there's no damn way that I am ever going to get to there. But I'm like, you know what? They have a different story than me. Like, you, I can't you can't compare yourself to the big names out there. You know, everybody's success takes off at a different time. And you just have to be like, all right, okay, I understand. Good, good for them. I give them props. I'm like, God damn, like I'm going to get there one day, but yeah, good for them. Round of applause. Yeah. But you just have to just be like, you know what? It takes time. One day you're going to wake up and it's going to take off and it's going to be like, all right. But you just, that's one of the things like I've actually heard people say, like, how do you compare? I actually got asked that question. Like, how do you keep going when they see, you know, everybody else on TikTok, like, Hey, I make this much, you know, I just bought this. I'm like, because they're not me. You just have to be you and be authentic and it's going to take off. It will. Something so strongly is coming up in me right now and I'm going to share it. And that is that I'm feeling like brother Dave this morning. I'm giving a shot, <laughs> you know, um, preach Dave, <laughs> God, the universe, my friends, whatever you believe in, is not going to give you more of something if you cannot handle or not grateful for what you already have. This goes back to what I talked about just a second ago. And if I'm getting 200 views on my videos, if I'm getting one opt-in to my email list today, the universe, God, is not going to give me more people to serve is not going to give me more people to lead. It's not going to give me more people to take care of. It's not going to give me more opportunity if I basically don't value what I already have, if I'm not serving the people that are right in front of me. Right. And for many of us, that opportunity to get good at something, to really hone our skills... It's such a perfect process because you have less people listening to you at the beginning. That's when you should be honing your skills, putting out the most content, dialing it in the most. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way that you're eventually going to get more of something. True. Very true. In the mindset of how am I, you know, comparisonitis or even jealousy, envy, there's you're not in your best self to put out the best energy in the best content if you're in that mindset. As one of my old recovery buddies says, if it doesn't come out in the wash, it comes out in the rinse. So if I'm secretly bitter and envious and jealous instead of happy for somebody and inspired by their success, I'm not going to like somehow put out positive vibes. Those Jealous mm -hmm. and bitter vibes are somehow going to seep out and people will sense that and can sense that. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. If you're on the brink of quitting your business and shutting it down anytime because, you know, it's not doing what you think it should do. The person who's listening to your message, the person who's about to buy will be able to sense that. Versus yep. versus. If you're in it to win it, no matter what, you're happy and inspired by other success stories. You're celebrating people. You have an abundant mindset. You, you want to learn from people. It's collaboration, not competition to you. I'm going to tell you something. I've seen people do this over 12 years. The bitter ones never grow. The ones who are constantly happy for people like it's a very simple test. Can you be happy for somebody? And if you genuinely cannot be happy for somebody, then you have to do some chakra adjusting or something because this is about collab the difference between employee and entrepreneur. One difference would be it is collaboration, not competition. You are not in competition for a promotion that only one of you is going to get. There is enough opportunity for everybody. That's the difference. You know what I mean? What comes up for you as I'm ranting about this? 
you're absolutely right. Like I, I know like, you know, when I was down and I was like, I'm going to quit. Like you can definitely see it in my TikToks. You can see that mm. I was definitely down and kind of, you know, like, what the hell am I doing? Like, this is, I'm not doing this anymore. But then it was like, you see them now. And I'm just like, look, here it is. And you got my- your swagger, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. it, I get it. Everybody has that. You know, you see, you know, people doing what you want to do. And it's like, you're like, well, when the hell's my time going to come? It's like, you just have to be like, it's coming. Yeah. Just keep doing it. It's going to come. And it, you're, it's going to surprise the shit out of you when it does. I mean, when I did my first high ticket, I was like, ain't no way. There's no damn way that I'm going to do this. And then I got the email and then I silently stopped the Facebook page waiting for the shout out. And I was like, yes, yeah. like that was, you have to just celebrate your little victories and it'll yeah. just keep you going and don't give up. Absolutely. I, um, I have a, um, a shirt that I, I had, um, I had made and it says it's my time, right? It's my time because you really have to claim when it's your time. Nobody's mm-hmm. going to make it. You have to say it's my time, right? I, mean, I think that's one of the biggest things that is, is, is important for us all to, um, to remember is that this isn't a permission style thing. You know what I mean? Right. This isn't like, okay, now somebody's going to come along and finally give you permission or somebody's going to come around and, um, you know, tell you that, uh, okay, you know, it's finally, um, you know, it's finally uh, time for you to start speaking like an expert, like, you know what you're talking about, like nobody's going to come along. And the reason why we don't give out like certificates or whatever here at Legendary to try to be like college is because honestly, just because you got a freaking degree from a university, you don't walk in and like a superhero, you got to be the person. You don't just Mm -hmm. hire the piece of paper. That's You're why right. a lot of people end up not going into their degree field because the the college education and the degree doesn't guarantee you a job. So, man, this is all about like our 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 internal vibrations, our ability to be able to celebrate other people's success, our ability to be able to manifest our own success because we're saying it's my time right now. Mm-hmm. Like it is my time. You have to claim it. You got to claim it. Nobody, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give it to anybody because then it's not really yours. It's you didn't make the decision to say it's my time. Right. Right. I did. Oh, it's your time. It's your time, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. It's your time. Mm -hmm. But if you don't feel it internally and you're not like, Hey, it's my time. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting my swagger back. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're, you're right. And like you saying that, Oh, it's my time. I realize I'm, I have a tattoo on my foot. It says one step at a time. And I'm like, that's how you have to take this one step at a time every day. Yeah. How did you take your marriage? How did you take your kids? How did you Mm -hmm. take your last job? How did you take every single day of your life? One step at a time. Yeah. But nobody really prepares us for entrepreneurship. So it's like, oh my God, it feels like a rocky roller coaster. But friends, that's why you got to kind of rise up and and see where you're going. Realize, gee whiz, this is only a molehill. It's not a mountain. Mm-hmm. You know, I can do this. I can overcome my own inability to be. I can overcome my comparisonitis. I can com- I can overcome my feelings of low self esteem and inadequacy right now. I can overcome my feelings of being uncomfortable, feeling vulnerable. I can overcome all of those things. Those are simply muscles that I've not worked out in a long time or maybe ever, but I can work them out. They're just atrophy right now. I can work them out. And haven't you found this to be true? You've Mm -hmm. even illustrated it over this entire interview that when you started, this is how you felt. And then now you got your swagger, et cetera. You got to claim your success and give yourself permission to be swagalicious out there and really <laughs> your confidence, baby, and not, not, you know, pussyfoot around out there cr- for sure. Christmas cakes. You got to really go out there and say, I'm here. I earn this seat. Take it or leave it. This is what I'm marketing. This is what's on this profile. I don't care if you like it or not. This is what we're doing here. Yeah, exactly. And like I tell my kids, I'm like, one thing I always tell them is you're not going to grow if you stay in comfortable positions. You have to be put in that uncomfortable position to grow. And this is 
exactly true for me. I'm like uncomfortable posting and I grew. I'm like, I stepped through it and I'm like, Hey, here I am. You know what? It is what it is. Listen, I let, I am (laughs) not, I am not content in life unless I'm uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's a problem because I, I, it's a, it's a gift and a curse because, and I'm not the most successful and most motivated guy in the world. I don't mean that. I I mean, in all areas of my life, it's not just business that I'm constantly pushing myself and being uncomfortable in. It's every area of my life. I I'm constantly nervous. I'm constantly taking risk. That makes me feel alive because I'm trying new things. I'm growing. I'm having new experiences. If you're comfortable, if you're feeling like a lot of fear, Jeff Bezos had the number one best fucking piece of advice I've ever heard about anxiety. Somebody said, how do you deal with anxiety? This was back when he was starting Amazon back in the day. He said, you know, I, I really don't have anxiety because what I learned is, is that if I have something that comes up in my head and I begin to get anxious about it, if I don't do anything about it, the anxiety stays and it festers. Absolutely. If I do something about it, if I send the first text message, if I send an email, if I just get the ball rolling on something, instantly the anxiety goes away because I'm now there might be new anxiety about, but it's not, it's new. That's good. It's not good to have anxiety fester because it then turns honestly into depression. And Mm -hmm. I've seen that manifest with many loved ones. Yep. So Let's end this Friday with the inspiration, of course, from you, Lindsay. And it's been wonderful. Affiliate Mama Bear on TikTok. Go check her out. And let's end this day remembering that we are in full control of when our success starts. We are in full control of claiming our seat and claiming our spot. We do not have to explain ourselves to anyone. Now, I am not here to get in the middle of anyone's marriage or anything like that. I am strictly talking about people out there in the world, strangers. You do not owe a damn person a single explanation. Let us all marinate on that on this wonderful Friday. And let us also marinate on the fact that each one of us is coming through the front door and has to experience the same thing that everybody else does. The same uncomfortability, take the similar risks, do similar things, even if we promote different products and different niches, if we do affiliate marketing, courses, coaching, or events, any of the core four business models, there's going to be anxiety. But as Jeff Bezos eloquently and simply said, the moment you just do something, instead of festering, marinating, you take a single simple action on it, much of that anxiety will dissipate Mm -hmm. because you're actually getting the ball rolling. And so, Lindsay, have a wonderful weekend, a beautiful vacation. Uh, Enjoy the car ride as you're working. We'll think about you on your phone. Being a a boss, badass mama, right? (laughs) Traveling around, hanging out with your kids, working on your phone. You go, girl. Come back and keep us posted. Come back and and give us a follow-up here in a few months and stay legendary, my friend. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. See ya. See ya. All right, my friends, go follow her, Affiliate Mama Bear, over on TikTok. What a cool conversation and a wonderful way to end Friday. Authentic, real topics, real stuff that we're all going through and uh, having, you know, different, we all have to overcome them in different ways. We have a a decade and a day workshop going on today. We have our support and our hot seat coaching calls for our Blueprint students. If you're going through the the challenge, my friend, continue, finish. Uh, You know, um, there's, 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 it's incredible what just that information, not even including the Blueprints, how that's kind of impacted lives like a, like a ripple effect. Um, Allow it to impact your life. Take the information. (laughs) Even if you don't learn it here, I encourage you to learn it, but it's laid out here in a really, uh, in a way that's proven to work, that's proven to help people, that's proven to get people results. So invest in yourself, invest some time into yourself, invest some money into yourself, whether it's here or somewhere else to upgrade your skills, upgrade your earning power, 
So you can make the latter part, the second half of 2023, the best six months of your life. Stay legendary, my friend. We'll see you back here on Monday for another episode. Get out of here. Peace.